Hello, mixtresses and mixters. This is Mixtress Ray. You're watching Mixtress Video. We're doing a pick a pile reading today. And in case you're interested, I also do private readings. And I just set up a new thing with YouTube that is like, I think it's called Super Thanks. I don't know. It's like a little heart. You'll see it. And if you click on it, you can donate some money. Give me a little tip for these readings that I'm doing for you guys. If you want to, no pressure. I completely understand being broke. Okay, so today our pick a pile reading is uh, the theme. Right now I'm theming all of these around like combinations of decks I want to work with. So today I'm doing my three least used decks. Pile one, Tarot del Fuego. Pile two, motherfucking Thoth. Pile three, UFO Tarot. So I'm gonna light the candle and maybe even, I'm gonna light some incense today, which I never do anymore because my eyes are doing better so I can burn incense again. I was having like a chronic dry eye issue there for a minute. I'm looking for my matches, here we go, okay. While you're picking your piles. Using my phone today, guys. What do you think? It's definitely a wider shot than with my video camera. My video camera is just making me cranky lately. I think I need to reformat the SD card or something. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Okay. Pile one. Let's get going. So this one is, I've had this deck for almost a year now. And it's, it's very weird. <laughs> um, it's kind of nonsensical. I like it, but it's like, I'm having a similar relationship to it than I had that I had to um, Santa Muerte Tarot, which was very, uh, like I feel almost like uh, I get rejected when I wanna work with this deck. Like it doesn't really wanna work with me a lot of the time. It's not quite as inaccessible as Santa Muerte was to me, but yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit difficult. to know today from these decks. <laughs> we need to talk about change, guys. I mean, we have to. Whether you want to or not, we need to. Definitely a wider shot because it's like, I mean, this deck is a little bit small, but I do kind of have more room to work with than I usually do which is I don't want that to be the answer because that means that I spent like $280 on a video camera a couple years ago for no fucking reason if I'm just gonna use my fucking phone Jesus <laughs> hello you've reached a uh, tarot reader that cusses like a sailor.com how are you Debbie 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 dot why am I doing this? Dot com. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna use a minty oracle because um, I'm not the oracle decks that I'm using are all ones that I use all the fucking time. Um, so these aren't oracle decks that I never use. It's just 
tarot decks that I never use. Okay, what is the moral imperative for your reading today? Okay. Okay, and we're talking about boundaries again a little bit because the whole deal with I give offerings that are genuine, it's not only about like give offerings, absolutely give offerings, please do um, give offerings to others. And this, whenever I say give offerings, I'm thinking specifically, uh, or not specifically, I'm thinking more broadly in the sense of like offerings of help to someone. Or if someone is asking for your help, you giving it to them is an offering. Um, or it could even be in the more like religious sense of like, you have a devotion to a deity and maybe lately your offerings to them, your prayers, your whatever it is that you do is not genuine. Maybe you're going through the motions and it's important to you know, like this person is, she's got like a glowing heart center, right? Or heart chakra. And she's going, she's ascending into this void because she's being led with her heart, right? She is giving, giving, <laughs> giving offerings that are genuine. And that's important. You know, don't offer help if you don't want to give it. I mean, that's... That's a big deal for me because I, I don't really ask for help most of the time. And if someone's offering it, I really, really don't want them to be offering it unless they really want to, you know, cause I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are doing this with the best of intentions, but there's a lot of people out there that are, that offer their help to people just kind of like, because they were taught to do that. Or because, like, they just think that's the nice thing to do, or that's what their parents always did, so that's what was the kind of behaviors that was modeled to them, like, people overextending themselves. People are overextending themselves all the time in this world, and I just don't think they should give offerings that are genuine. Because... I mean, I hate to say cliche, I, I hate to sound cliche, but that is something that we're all going to fucking do because that shit's a cliche for a reason. <laughs> and, you know, this life is just too goddamn short and our resources are too fucking finite to be doing things that we don't want to be doing, you know? I mean, we don't know what the fucking meaning of life is except to like try to have a good time and not hurt each other i mean seriously that's all we got that's all we're gonna get we're not gonna get an answer and if you feel like you have an answer more profound than that baby hold on to it don't let anyone question your reality as long as you're not hurting anybody else as long as you're enjoying yourself and not hurting anyone else So how do we affect change? Since I'm assuming that the death card is showing up because we need to make a change. Because change is imminent. Change is important. Okay, one more oracle deck because I have one more space I want to fill here. You know what? I'm never using my own goddamn oracle decks. Link below if you want to buy. <laughs> Sorry to be like such a shill lately, guys, but I need to make some fucking money. Okay, so what change needs to be affected? I mean, it could be that the change for you is deeply rooted in this concept of giving offerings that are 
giving offerings that are genuine. Givering. I'm going to keep saying givering. I don't know what the word is, but the word, whatever that word is that a lot of autistic people have, that's like your words just sort of like combine and like you end up saying shit like W said back when he was president in the early 2000s. <laughs> like, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I can't think of an example right now. Holy shit. Why am I doing this? I don't know. Okay. Death. The sun. Let's see what kind of glare we're dealing with here. Ace of Wands. Wow, okay. I mean, it's time to pave a new path, you know? It's the answer to the change that you're thinking of making is yes, yes. The Lovers. Sorry, I'm not holding these super close, but I think they're getting glary up close. The Tower. And the world. Wow. Okay. So. <laughs> wow. Five fucking major arcana cards. Ace of Wands. Yes. Whatever the question is about forging forward and like if you're thinking of pursuing a creative project that's kind of risky, yes, do it. Because you are at the end of this cycle. And if we see this as, if we see this as a linear path that you're on and you are here, you're presented with an opportunity right now, an opportunity for change, you're being handed an opportunity for change? The answer is yes. Go down that path because even though like I see this as like if you do nothing, that's the big deal with the tower card, right? My mom used to say, this is sort of like a lower stakes example, but she used to say, if you don't decide what to do with your life, it will be, the decision will be made for you. And like in her case, it was a situation of like, she chose to work for the family business. And then she felt like she was, I don't know, wasting her potential because she was doing that maybe. But so it was like, she was warning me to make a decision about something big to do with my life. Um, but it's also, that's kind of the tower cards energy, right? Like if you don't, it can manifest in getting fired for a job that you should have quit a year ago or two years ago or fucking five or 10 years ago. You know, um, this is, this opportunity here is an opportunity for you to, <laughs> forgive me, but take life by the fucking balls and do it now, you know? Like, yes, you're going to be successful you're going to find your calling because that is how I see the lover's card. I see it as self-actualization, your calling in life. You, and if we're going back to this sort of like, for some reason I am getting this element of devotion, forgive that word. It's kind of a triggering word for anyone that's grown up inside, you know, conventional Christianity of any kind. But I get the feeling that like you are tailor making or have already tailor made your own spirituality. And this lover's card is a part of that. You might even be like, if we're looking at this very, like, if we're looking at this from a goddess viewpoint, it could be that goddesses that you're drawn to right now are Santa Muerte, Kali, Even seeing some um, Lalita. Any Egyptian god or goddess with the sun card here. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of like divinity energy here. 
<laughs> Let's see if that continues with your other cards. So from my Mixtress Oracle deck, you got only by Nine Inch Nails. So this is, I'll read the lyrics here in a second, but this is from an album that Trent Reznor, the main writer, the main person behind Nine Inch Nails, put out the year he turned 40. And this is when his lyrics sort of shifted from being pretty angry, angsty all the time to more self-reflective, more existential, um, more intuitive. Um, and this song kind of marks the turning point of that for me. Whenever Trent Reznor went from being whiny squire of dimness points if you get that reference he he signed prince of darkness try squire of dimness <laughs> i don't know if she was referring to trent reznor with that lyric but i always think of him with that this is when trent reznor transitioned from being squire of dimness to kind of a fucking king of swords you know he anyway he's someone that i kind of look up to at this point to a certain extent like you know don't go crazy of course but this song in particular, I remember whenever I was in my 20s, just laughing at how cliche this, these lyrics sounded. But now that I'm 40, I think this is such a fucking insightful song. It's difficult to sing karaoke, but I've tried and I will try again. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna read the lyrics now. I'm becoming less defined as days go by, kind of drifting into the abstract in terms of how I see myself. Sometimes I think I can see right through myself. Less concerned about fitting into the world, your world that is, because it doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't really matter anymore. None of this shit. Yes, I am alone, but then again, I always was. As far back as I can tell, I think maybe it's because you were never really real to begin with. I just made you up to hurt myself. I just made you up to hurt myself. There is no you, there is only me. So, sorry, I kind of went into like the cadence of the song, but I can't not do that with most songs that I love. This is a really weird, like existential sort of song, right? Because he ends up like, repeating over and over, there is no you, there is only me. There is no fucking you, there is only me. So we don't know if he's talking about like breaking up with someone, if he's talking about fame in general, if he's talking about the fact that, I mean, here's how I see it. Here's how I see it. I see it as when he keeps saying there is no you, there is only me. I just made you up to hurt myself. He's either talking about a persona within himself or it's like, I feel like you get to a point in life where you're old enough that you do not give a fuck what anyone else thinks because you realize there's no time for that bullshit, you know, there's no time for it. And everybody is so busy inside their own heads, worrying about their own shit and in their own self narratives that it's, you know, anybody worrying about what someone else is thinking of them, someone else is thinking about you for like a fucking second. You're the one that's always thinking about yourself. You're the only one that matters. So, you know, it's a bit of an, it's a bit of a, narcissistic mindset it is not necessarily narcissism but it's a bit of a narcissistic mindset a bit there's a little touch of delusions of grandeur there but i want that for you i want you to have a little bit of a touch of delusion of grandeur in your life because if it gives you enough motherfucking confidence to do the things that you want to do with your life do it baby do it as, again as long as you're not hurting anyone else what does it matter if like you're a goddess in your own mind what does it matter you know you don't have to like try to convince other people of this please don't please don't become a cult leader but if you want to believe that you have some kind of divine importance 
again, as long as you're not hurting anyone, as, not, as long as you're not trying to make other people believe in your divine importance, we can all to believe, believe in our own divine importances, <laughs> okay? All right, keep trying. So maybe this tower moment for you is manifesting as a failure in some creative venture that you're in the middle of. Freedom. Yeah, so like, you, you're trapped in something. You are trapped in something. And you gotta break free from it. And I do think it has something to do with the... the expectations or the perceived expectations from others. So you think you know what others expect from you, but I think that you think people expect more from you than they actually do. They're expecting you to take care of yourself. They're expecting you to do only, to do what you agreed to do because you want to do it. They, they don't expect you to agree to things that you don't want to do. And if they expect that, it might be because you've set that precedent and it might be a little painful at first to get them to stop expecting the most from you. But it's your life, not theirs. There is no you, there is only me. There are no mistakes. There you go. You know that um, Fiona Apple song? So I'm giving you like a an alternative song. Is it in here? Is this one that I picked? I don't know if it is. Hold on. I picked so many Fiona Apple songs. It's not even funny. It's ridiculous. It's too many. I know. I know. You don't have to tell me. But I also left half the deck blank so you can add your own. Yeah, I don't think I picked. Okay, there's this Fiona Apple song called A Mistake. I want to make a mistake. I want to do it on purpose. Unpave my path. There you go. I think that's also your sort of mantra. I want to make a mistake. I want to do it on purpose. Unpave my path. Maybe even write that down if, if it sounds as cool to you as it does to me. Fiona Apple, master lyricist. You don't have to follow the path that anyone else follows. And if you chose this deck, this is a fucking beautiful little weirdo <laughs> that doesn't follow anyone else's path. Like... Whatever, if you're on like a career path right now, if it's not exactly what you want to be doing, if you're not leading with your heart, essentially, then you're on, you might be on the wrong path. But again, there are no mistakes. You'll end up where you're supposed to be. Whether the world has to step in and do something drastic or not, you're going to get where you're supposed to be. So that part, don't worry about it. But you might as well do what you want, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to read from the There Are No Mistakes in the guidebook. The ancient Chinese said this to each other before business negotiations. Whatever happens on the relative plane, the cosmos as a whole makes no errors. The uncreated, unborn, and unmade, there you go, unpave my path. The uncreated, unborn, and unmade always provide new alternatives. There is no possibility of ever straying from the path, whatever its turns may be. This is not a license to do anything, but an assertion that the ego or the illusion of ego tends to create problems. There you go. And it definitely sounds like ego to say there is no you, there is only me. And I could be vast vastly misinterpreting Trent Reznor's lyrics and he will never confirm nor deny this which is one of the things I love about him <laughs> he's like I don't know it means whatever you think it means and I love that about him but this is the way I interpret this song you might have a different interpretation that changes the meaning of this reading trust yourself I've been getting a couple questions lately on my pick a pile readings about like clarifying things about the piles or answering further questions about the piles. I'm not going to be doing that. That is up to you. Or if you, if you watch one of my pick a pile readings and you're like, oh my God, that's me. 
I need to know more. Come buy a reading, baby. Come in, the water's fine. <laughs> okay. That is pile one. That felt fun. Thank you guys. Okay. Put that back in the box because I'm a very organized little psychic. Okay. Okay. This is the hard one for me because when I read with this deck, I get really strong vibes of I don't want to talk to you. And I rescued this deck from my giveaway box today in order to do this reading. I am giving it a chance to redeem itself in my eyes. Okay. What do we need to know? I'm going to let the first draw from this deck kind of determine the theme of your reading pile two. We went long on pile one. <laughs> Getting so much world energy lately. Getting so much. Okay. So what is the cycle that you are at the end of? Tell me more about the cycle that you're at the end of. So that's mostly how I see the world card. I mean, it's an achievement. It's like the world dancer. It's like the celebration, the achievement at the end of like the end of the whole major arcana. Like it's, it's some definite self-actualization, right? Emperor two. Okay. I swear to God, if we have a bunch of major arcana cards again, it means that everyone from pile one just stuck around for pile two, which is great for me. <laughs> Watch as many of them as you want, babies. Okay. Let's pull an animal card for you. If you are still around from pile one, I forgot to mention that your card from this deck is a starfish card. So if you do want to look further into sort of you know, animal totem energy, that kind of stuff. Starfish is yours. And now we're on pile two. I'm organized, I swear. Okay, we need a minty oracle. What is your moral imperative? Sorry, I'm sh like shedding today. My hands are there. Getting to that point where it's like, it's at my waist again. I want to cut it. I want to cut it. I want to have that scene like in Empire Records when Robin Tunney is like making eye contact with herself as she hacks off her hair and then shaves it. It's amazing. <laughs> I've always wanted to have that moment, but I don't have the guts. So since I'm talking about, since I did just bring that up, um, is there something like that in your own life? Do you want to make a drastic change in your appearance because you you feel like I have had this fucking haircut for 20 years and I'm done? That's cool. If so, if that's the cycle you're at the end of and you're ready to like, sometimes it's needed to just like change your look. And, you know, make changes that you can come back from. You know, like if you dye your hair purple, it will grow back out again. If you pierce your nose, you can always take the ring out, you know? I mean, some piercings always have a scar associated when they heal, but that's okay. Life is a fucking scar, okay? Okay, what am I missing? Oh, yeah. Morgan's Tarot. Okay. 
Oh, keep up the good work. You're doing it, baby. You're doing it. And if you've been trying to like, if you've been like apprenticing to do something or you're learning like skilled work and you've been learning it for a long time, you're at a point of really mastering your craft at this point, I would say. Okay, your card from Mixtress Oracle is Ever So Lonely by Sheila Chandra. Sink into your eyes and all I see. Your love is an ocean. An ocean refuses no river. Waiting for the time when we can be alone together. Alone together eternally. The ocean refuses no river. Your ocean refuses no river. So I see this as the Ace of Cups. It's sort of like an offering of love. But I'm also seeing it in this moment. So maybe this resonates with one of you guys. This, this part, I'm waiting for the time when we can be alone together eternally. The ocean refuses no river. Like I'm seeing that as almost like when we die, we return to that river. Where? And I'm not saying that I necessarily believe this because I don't fucking know. But it's, it's a pretty concept to think about, right? Like if you think of eternity, the afterlife, as an ocean you're the river that's gonna flow back into it and you're gonna rejoin all the other rivers, all the other lakes, whatever. If, if every person is a body of water, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm seeing that as kind of like sort of an eternal resting place afterlife type situation. So if there's someone that you're missing that's no longer with us, I would recommend this as a song to listen to. Ever So Lonely by Sheila Chandra. Let's flip over the rest of your cards. So we have Five of Wands, Strife, Four of Swords, Truce, Princess of Wands, and Emperor. I can be trusted. This is one that we got recently, guys. Abundance. So we have a whale here. And this person in this rainbow funnel thing. And I'm seeing this almost as a visualization of this right now. An ocean refuses no river. If you're thinking that like whatever thing that you want to do, you it's almost like you feel like it doesn't matter. Other people are already doing podcasts about Buffy. Why? Why am I adding another one? Or there are already so many tarot channels. Why would we want mine? Why would anyone want mine? Because there's room for everybody. And you have, you're the only one that has the unique voice of you. We have two card number nines here, which is my favorite number. Nature. We just got this in a reading a couple days ago. Are you the same person that shows that reading? <laughs> Hi, if so, welcome back. So what are you being... I am seeing these two cards as relating to each other. I can be trusted and five of wands. What's the deal? What's the deal with that? Who in your household or your workplace are you being deceptive towards? It's like there's a lot of petty arguments going on when everyone that's having the petty argument is avoiding the is avoiding like the real issues that need to be discussed. They're fighting over something stupid, like who drank the last of the orange juice and didn't rebuy more. You know, you're fighting about stupid shit because you're avoiding being truthful with each other about the real shit. This is gonna sound harsh, but there's somebody that isn't worth your time 
there's somebody that if you cut them out of your life, if you took a break from them, if you disappeared from their life, both of your lives would not be, this is going to sound harsh, but it's like, if you guys stopped interacting with you, I'm thinking of this as like a, just as an example, a roommate situation. You're fighting with this person all the time. The bigger issues are underneath. But the truth is, you're making this big deal about all these little things. But the truth is, if y'all stopped talking today and never talked again, your each of your lives might be a little bit better, but not by much. They wouldn't be worse, for sure. But they wouldn't be that much better. It's like, and this is coming out wrong, but it's like, Y'all aren't affecting each other's lives as much as you think you are. This isn't some big, important, divine, <laughs> divinely uh, blessed relationship. Y'all can just stop arguing, stop fighting, um, just stop coming at each other and just stop talking to each other entirely. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Y'all are going to be able to move on with your lives. Because it's time to reconnect with who you really are. It's distracting you from whatever that relationship is that needs to just be walked away from. It's distracting you from the bigger picture of your life. From the things that are... I'm seeing all this like ascendance here too, right? So this, this person has the opportunity to ascend into this abundance here. And then we have this princess of wands sort of floating up this like river of fire. And she's taking her cat with her. And it's, it's almost like this vibe of, you don't have to try that hard. Make a truce with the universe, too. Not just a truce with that person that you don't really need to be in a relationship with anymore. Whether that be friendship, family, boyfriend, girlfriend, other friend, whatever. Once you leave that person behind, it's like you just start flowing down the river. You already have the momentum. I see this as effortless. But you just have to figure this shit out here. What is this petty shit? Who do you need to come clean with? It's almost like in this particular scenario, if you do resonate with that situation of like, you have someone in your life that you probably just need to completely stop talking to with that person, you don't necessarily like, I'm getting that you do not need to explain yourself. You don't need to completely have it out. You simply stop replying to that person's text messages. Or if you do live with them, you simply start looking for another place to live. You don't even have to tell them. You don't owe them anything. This is somebody that I feel like is a very low stakes relationship, but y'all are acting like it's big. It's not big. And you're in charge. I think that's why that emperor was there. You're in charge. You don't need them to agree with you. You can just walk away. You don't even need to tell them what you need to say. I know that's hard to not be heard. But in this case, I don't think you need to. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? I don't know. I hope so. Pile three. UFO tarot. has been in order for like ooh, almost a year <laughs> I never ever use it but in fact I mean I've done like little card pulls for myself with this deck but have I ever used it I know I've never used it for someone else I don't even know if I've used it for myself in like a reading more than like three or four cards at a time. So this is going to be the most significant reading that this deck has ever done right now, guys. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? Let's see what 
gotta move this crap out of the way so that, you know, it looks like a beautiful aesthetic space. I don't even know exactly how this deck is gonna read. <laughs> she might be a little difficult. This one's just cute. It's like the X-Files deck, you know? It's kind of that cheesy, sort of like 90s. God, I swear there's a hair. Why am I shedding? God. <laughs> Gonna shave my head, guys. It's a cool deck, though. There's a different species of um, alien in each of the minor arcana suits. Oh my god, the hair. <laughs> it's because I was wearing my leather jacket a lot of time today. And it just, like, it sucks up my hair. Like you guys want to hear about me talking about my fucking hair. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. This isn't about my hair. It's about you. It's about your hair. That's what this reading is today. What do you want to do with your hair? Gee, my hair smells terrific. Gee, your hair looks terrific. Is that what it was called? The 70s brand of like shampoo? Was it smell or look? I feel like it was smell. Anyway. <laughs> hmm. What is your animal? Oh, I didn't do what I did. We'll let your animal pick the topic. Your animal will be the topic of your... Focus on the big picture. Yeah. It's kind of a continuation from pile two as well. So, yeah, it's time to zoom out. So this is a, is this Baby Hawk? This might be Baby Hawk. Let's read from the guidebook on this one. Card 19, Visionary Hawk. Regardless of whether your current situation is less than desirable, this card comes as a confirmation that something beautiful is awaiting you. The first step is to make that decision to get out of your ego's limited perception. So this keeps coming up in this reading, just this whole shit about ego. Like, I think that is part of, if you were around for pile one, um, I was talking about the concept of, or was that pile two? I think it was pile one. Anyway, sometime in this video. I was talking about um, the idea that like nobody's thinking about you no one is that's just it's the truth nobody's thinking about you you know if if somebody laughs at you doing something embarrassing they're just like taking joy in a weird moment and they're moving on from it you're the one that's going to be thinking about it later you know <laughs> sour times by Porta said, who am I? What and why? Cause all I have left is my memories of yesterday. Oh, these sour times. Cause nobody loves me. It's true. Nobody loves me. Not like you do. So this, that, the, 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 the lyrics in that particular song remind me of a very specific situation in my life, wherein I was off and on with this guy. He was like the first love of my life. He was a big deal. And we had recently broken up. He left me for someone else. And it didn't work out with that person. 
So then he started hanging around me again because that person rejected him. And he came at me with this attitude of, nobody loves me like you do. That's why I came back. When I knew it was because she rejected him. He left me for her and she rejected him. And then he came crawling back to me. And he didn't even, this motherfucker, he didn't even ask me to reconcile the relationship. He didn't say, do you want to be boyfriend, girlfriend again, whatever. He just said, nobody loves me like you do. And in his mind, that was us getting back together. No, no. And also, this is something that abusive people say to people. They say things like, in this case, it's somebody saying, nobody loves me. It's true. Not like you do. But if somebody's being emotionally manipulative to you, they might say something like, nobody loves you like I do. No one's going to put up with this aspect of your personality like I do. So baby, we're meant to be together because I love you. I'm okay with that shitty aspect of you. I accept you. No one else is going to understand. Not like I do, baby. So, sorry I just... That's just triggering me even saying that out loud. And I'm sorry if it was to you. But if someone's saying that shit to you, run. Run. <laughs> this song is probably supposed to be referring to like an actual like you know a singular love that you have with someone where you really don't have you know I would say that about my Michael nobody loves me like he does we understand each other in a way that I feel is superior to other relationships in my life which is why I chose to sign a fucking piece of paper saying that we're married you know which was a huge deal for me, by the way. Like, I never thought I would get married. Okay, there it is already. Do it now. She jumped out of that deck. She said, do it now. Focus on the big picture. Do it now. And maybe this is supposed to just symbolize, you know, you're in a shitty spot right now. Because this is somebody who's asking themselves, who am I? Who am I? What and why? Because all I have left is my memories of yesterday. So you might be in a, in a stuck place wondering who you are at this point. But in order to refocus, step back to look at the big picture. And if you have to go on like a little day trip or something, which I'm always recommending to people. But seriously, if you can get away from your life, even if you're just like the other day, I, or this was yesterday. Yesterday I was feeling really depressed about my finances and I needed to get gas anyway. And I had enough money for like three fourths of a tank of gas. <laughs> so I was like, I just chose to drive to a gas station that was like on the edge of town because it's a nice drive. I hadn't been to that particular gas station in a long time. It's like such a silly little thing, but it was, I was going outside of my normal places where I drive. I was going on a drive that I hadn't been on in a while. It took a little bit longer because it was on the edge of town. It's like, I can't fully escape my situation, but I can go for a drive. I was out of the house for a couple of hours. I spent some time in a cemetery I don't usually go to on a different side of town. And it really helped me. It was like I was getting a breath of fresh air, even though I literally wasn't even leaving my town, you know? Whatever version of that kind of situation, even if it's something very small like that, going to the library branch that's not in your neighborhood, <laughs> the one that you don't usually go to, um, that is a way for you to refocus on the big picture because it's getting some distance that helps you refocus on that. I benefit with gratitude. So I feel like you're going to be rewarded for whatever you choose to do. Again, as long as you are leading with what you really want in life, you know, leading with your heart. Abundance. 
The last pile got abundance too. <laughs> this is beautiful. I haven't even flipped over the tarot yet, but you've got abundance. Do it now. I benefit with gratitude and focus on the big picture. So as long as you are focusing on the big, big picture, taking action for yourself and remembering to be thankful along the way of everyone that helped you get to where you are and thankful for what you have. That was another thing that I ended up doing yesterday because I was depressed about financial shit. And like, there's some things that I want right now that I can't afford, blah, blah, blah. Just stupid shit, right? But I literally refocused. I talked out loud to myself too. So I'm sitting in a cemetery and I'm just talking to myself. And I'm saying, okay, I want this thing. But what else do I have that I can focus on instead of getting this thing? And it, it helped. It really did. It's like, okay, yes, I don't have this particular version of this thing. But I have this other thing. I have this other thing and that's pretty cool. And I'll go home and play with that today. <laughs> and I mean, in my case, it was something very simple like that of a physical item that I could not afford right now that I was hoping to be able to get yesterday, but I can't afford it yet. But I was reminded after, you know, taking some time, taking some deep breaths, going for a drive, that I have other things that can fill that need for now and that I will be able to get this other thing. I just have to save up a little bit for it. I just have to wait a little bit longer and that's okay, I can do that. So basic, right? But it's true. 10 of, ooh, it's probably pentacles, right? It's gotta be, gotta be. <laughs> 10 of pentacles. So again, that abundance this is Knight of Pentacles. It's just slow and steady. Keep going. Do it now. Keep going. Putting one foot in front of the other. Focus on the big picture. Just keep working towards it. Eight. Woo, shit. I don't know if this is swords or wands. Let me find... This doesn't tell me anything. Sorry about this, guys, but that was the nature of what I'm doing here. I think it's, I think it's wands. That looks more like a four of swords. I think it's wands. Yeah, I think it's wands. I'm going to go with that, and I hope I'm right. Eight of wands. So... It's funny, we get the Knight of Pentacles, which is like more slow and steady, one foot in front of the other one day at a time, and Eight of Wands is more like super fucking swift movement, right? So I feel like that's going to be sort of a take it a day at a time sort of thing. Like sometimes you're going to be moving real fast and sometimes you're going to be moving slow. Four of Pentacles. Save your damn money. Save it. <laughs> Seven of Swords. I hope. <laughs> Ace of Pentacles. Oh, so you have a lot of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, you're going to be... It's going to be like... Abundance. Abundance is your key word. I, I don't see any like major overhaul shit that I need to tell you because if you're still listening after hearing one of the other piles, I've already told you the major shit. But if you came to this pile first, it's because you singularly, singularly, it's because you specifically, you're kind of already on the path is what I see. Even though you have this implorative to focus on the big picture and do it now, I'm seeing this as a momentum that you already have. You're already on your way towards abundance. I mean, these are just like basically the exact same image. I mean, can you guys even tell these two things apart? <laughs> like so much abundance right now. As long as you... It's not only like focusing on the big picture, but it's refocusing on the big picture, you know, because you already know what you need to do. 
You already have everything lined up. You're already doing the thing. You're already making progress. And it's maybe if it's not starting to pay off yet, it's going to be soon. I mean, just the fact that we have the Ten of Pentacles, Abundance, and this beautiful I Benefit with Gratitude. I think, yeah, it either, again, just like it always is with these readings, it's like it's one of two things. Either you're already in this moment of abundance right now where it's like, so much is coming to you and this four of pentacles is here as sort of a warning like don't spend all your money yes it's great now but it's going to even out and it's going to be it's not going to be coming in as much in the future and that might be your moment to focus on the big picture or now focus on the big picture now because if you like if you suddenly started getting the kind of income that makes you think you're going to be a millionaire by, you know, a year from now, it's not always going to be as abundant as it is now. So don't spend it all right now. It's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Or if you feel like right now you're just trudging along and you never have any, you never have any resources, you never, you barely have enough resources and it just feels like it's never really going to happen. Or maybe you're like one of those people that like you think in order to have a child, you should have like X amount of money, but maybe I'm the last person that would tell someone to have a fucking child, but like maybe it's time for you to do the thing that you want to do now, whether or not you have the money to do it because that money's coming, you know, or like don't put your life off because everything's it's almost like I get this vibe that you're waiting which is contradicting what I just said about you know, like being on the right path but that probably just means somebody that's listening is already on the right path and just needs to keep going and there's somebody else that's like I get this vibe of um you waiting for everything to be perfect before you do the thing do it now one of my life philosophies, which I have a hard time following, is do it now, be ready later. Like, that's what I want for you. Do it now, be ready later. Things will start lining themselves up once you're moving. Like, the Knight of Pentacles is slow moving, but they're moving. They are moving. Just get going. You'll figure out where you're going once you start. You have to start putting those... Um, what are they called? Arrows? You have to start casting those arrows. <laughs> what do you call it? Bow and arrow. You call it casting an arrow? I doubt it. Shoot. Shoot. You have to start shooting those arrows. <laughs> you have to start shooting them. You have to get the momentum up. So if you don't already have the momentum, then start. If you do already have it, just keep going. Keep focusing on the big picture. Let me look at your do it now card. Perhaps, what did I do with the little book? Okay, there it is. This is card number seven. Very short and sweet. Just do it. Awareness comes only in the reality of experience. Yeah, do it now, be ready later. Sometimes, like, I mean, stupid example, but I'm, I call myself directionally challenged. I live in my hometown still, never moved away, 40 years old, and I've been driving since I was 15. I still have a hard time getting to places in my own hometown, which is not a huge town. It is kind of a small town. I should know how to get places, but a lot of the times I just don't know until I make a decision and start. If I don't know if I'm supposed to turn left or right and I turn right, I will know within like two or three blocks if I've gone the wrong way. Whereas if I had just sat there going, well, I don't know. It actually will take me less time to just make the decision, choose a direction, start going in it. And that's kind of why I created that 
sorry, I'm going to babble about my stupid life philosophy thing, but this card is do it now. So it's the perfect time. Do it now. Be ready later. The whole reason why I like made that up for myself is because that's how I work. I, I blame this on my Aries moon. It's sort of like I have to experience a thing before I know if it's right for me or not. Like I started DJing. Like I have a lot of different stories of like professions I almost had. <laughs> I have a lot of those stories because there were a lot of different things that I tried on. I went whole hog and tried to do it before I realized it wasn't for me. And that's okay. Like there's all this pressure on people in our society to like decide a career path whenever you're fucking 16 and you know figure out what school you're gonna go to figure out what your career track is figure out what your five-year plan is blah 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 blah. yes it's important to like have a big picture but you can pivot you can change that big picture you can change it all the time even if you decide to like train to let's say you're training to be a tattoo artist or something and you do it. You do the thing. You apprentice, you get good, you give away a bunch of free tattoos to all your friends and they love you and you've made some mistakes and it was horrifying, but you figured out how to fix them or you, you know, whatever, that person gets free tattoos for life and they're not that mad about it anyway, whatever. So you've done the thing and you're actually a tattoo artist now and you've been doing it for five years. You've been doing it for a decade and you've loved it, but you just feel like you're done. That's okay. You can make a different decision. You don't have to make an absolute decision about your entire life at any point. And you're not too old. If you're sitting there thinking, well, the thing that you want to do, I'm too old. I'm too old to do that. No, you're not. No, you're not. Unless what you're saying is that you're 85 years old and you want to become an Olympic athlete. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, you can find ways to be more physically active than you currently are. But I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe there are some 85 year olds that could become Olympic athletes, but it just depends on the thing. And it depends on their level of athleticism before that moment, you know? But anyway, I'm just saying, you're not too old. You're not too old to start the thing. You're not too old to change career paths. You're not too old to, because that's something that I see here. This do it now right underneath this Ace of Pentacles could be that you are headed towards a total career path. And I see this Seven of Swords here as like, your future is uncertain. Like it's not written in stone. Like you may think I'm on this path. This is what I'm doing. But if your heart's not in it, you don't have to be doing it. You can make a different decision. You can always make a different decision. You can always pivot. I promise you can. You just have to get going. You have to start doing it before you know if you turn the right direction. Here's the Ace of Cups too, just because I started shuffling again for some reason. So yeah, Ace of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, you can find, and look how beautiful this card is. Like, can we just take a second? It's really gorgeous paintings in this deck. It's out of print, sorry guys. <laughs> but you can find, I found this one on um, Etsy and it's, I think it's just, it's just the Ukrainian version of the deck. It's not even like a, it's not even like a, um, knockoff or anything. It's like the real thing. That's pretty cool. And I never use it and I should use it. Yeah, I was right about that being swords. Yes. Cause this is definitely, okay. Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> I wasn't lying to you this whole time. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Okay, um, just do it. Do it now. Be ready later. I'm telling you. Just do it. Doesn't matter if it's going to take you 10 years to do it and you're already 65. Who fucking cares? Your life is about enjoying it. And if you're led to do something right now, do it. Also, the Knight of Pentacles is like, this is a person that is enjoying the journey. This is a person that's luxuriating in the process. Luxuriate in the process. And if what you're thinking about doing 
is not, you don't like the process of doing it, fuck it. You know, don't be miserable for 10 years just because of the end goal. I mean, maybe that's contradicting the message of focusing on the big picture, but I don't think it is because I think the big picture is every day. The big picture is every day of your life. You need to be happy. You need to feel that abundance and that love. Oh, look, now she's just gazing at that card. How pretty. <laughs> okay, that's all I got. Bye.